Yeah. Sure if I can have everyone's attention. The topic of the day. Is doubling i of an exponential function. And the motivation for this topic is that the exponential functions in general are very hard to just look at and get into vision about. So say that I'm talking about a population of a city. T can be the number of years since the city was founded. And maybe the population is, I don't know, 50. 15,700 people times 1.047 to the power of t. So we can bug that numbers into this equation easily enough, but just looking at it, it's hard to get much intuition about what's going on here. I mean, is this population growing quickly? Is this population growing slowly? It's growing at an annual rate of 4.7%. But what does that mean? Like if I asked you concretely to just guess, how long do you think it will take for this population to reach 30,000? Probably very few people would have any solid intuition about that. The doubling time is a way of presenting exponential growth in a more sort of concrete and easy to swallow format. The doubling time, much like its name suggests, tells you how long does it take a quantity to double. And again, we like doubling time just because in general, something like um, a quantity doubles every 10 years is a lot easier to understand intuitively than a population increases by 9.3% every year or whatever. It's trying to put this in easy to understand terms. And our goal here is going to be to find doubling times. So, Probably the easiest way to demonstrate this is via example. Let's, let's grab this example and work with it. We're looking at P of T equals I think it was 37,000, nope, 15,700. One point zero four seven. 
times 1.047 raised to the power of T. And let's ask for the doubling time. And once you see this trick, it's pretty, I mean, it makes a lot of sense, I think. So the population starts at 15,700 people. What will the population be once it's doubled? 31,400. 31,400. So if we want to know how long it takes the population to double, we want to know when the population will be 31,400. And that gives us an equation, 31,400 equals 15,700 times 1.047 to the power of T. And once that equation has been set up, we're back to what we were doing yesterday, solving exponential equations. Um, at some point, we're going to want to take a logarithm, but we don't want to take any logarithms until the exponential is by itself. So this fit 15,700 is unwanted. And we can divide it away. Yeah. Well, on the right, those terms will cancel. On the left, we'll have two equals 1.047 to the power of t. And now, to the extent that anything involving logarithms can be said to be straightforward, this is pretty straightforward. We'll take the logarithm of both sides. Taking the logarithm of an exponential, we'll get the t out of the exponent. And then we don't, don't want to be intimidated. I've said this before, but this looks ugly because logarithms are new to us. It's really not. A number equals t times another number. Divide both sides by this number. And get whatever we get. That's not something we can do in our head. That'll be 15.092. Thank you. Let's round that. Yeah, that, that's what it's rounded to. Yeah, 15.092. And so 
take a moment to quietly appreciate the march of technology about even like 50 years ago, um, you would buy these books that were just tables of logarithms. And if you needed to know a logarithm, you would have to manually look it up in a book. Now that is no longer necessary. And again, the point of all of this is just to present information in an easy to parse manner. For most people saying that a city will double in size every 15 years is a lot more easy to comprehend than saying that a city is growing by 4.7% every year. One interesting thing about doubling time is, is that they only depend on the growth rate. So this initial number this 15,700 people didn't affect the doubling time. And to demonstrate that, what would happen if instead of 15,700, I changed this to 30,000? EFT is always going to be double the amount, so it's just going to be 6,000. It's just log of two again, so you can just yeah, use that's... growth rate, log of growth rate divided by log of two. That's it, exactly. Sorry, the other way around, log of two divided by growth rate. Yes, that's it, exactly. Because at this step, on this side, we have whatever, 30,000, on this side, we have once that the division step is always just going to get rid of that initial value, and you're always going to end up with a two on the left hand side. And that's, I mean, you can think of that as a shortcut if you want to find the doubling time of A times B to the power of T, you're always going to end up solving two equals B to the power of T. And I mean, I wouldn't commit this to memory, but you're always going to get the log of two over the log of B equals T. I wouldn't commit it to memory just because just because I don't think we do this enough to justify having it in our long-term memory. You certainly can if you want to. And notice, of course, that was exactly what we got here. The log of two divided by the log of B. Well, that's the doubling time. Any questions about this concept? And we can invest time that it took us to do that. We can talk about the sort of sister concept of the half life. Half-life is a phrase you're all probably familiar with from like radioactive decay. Um, when you have a radioactive isotope, 
it shrinks in size because radiation is literally like alpha and beta particles, right? So radioactive substance is literally shedding mass over time. It shrinks exponentially, and the rate at which it shrinks is usually given in terms of the half-life. So this is when you have A times B to the power of T. But B is less than one. So instead of growing, the quantity is shrinking. Um, even though it's usually um, even though most people see this concept in terms of radioactive decay, I mean, we can look at any exponential quantity <laughs> that is shrinking. Maybe a population again, but this time instead of taking off, the city is failing and people are leaving it. And um, you should be able to from the sort of deduce. I mean, now that we've seen how to find um, doubling times, what should we do to find the half-life? We're going to be taking half of 30,000 for 15,000. Dividing it by 30,000, we will always have log. 0.5 divided by the growth rate, long growth rate. Yeah, all of that was correct. Going through it at a slightly slower rate. Instead of double the quantity, we have half the quantity. So when we divide, we're going to get one half on the left. When we take the log of both sides, you'll get the log of one half equals T times the log of the, I would call this the growth factor rather than the growth rate, but T times the log of B, and we get the log of one half divided by the log of B. And then in our calculator, log of 0.5 divided by the log of 0 0.987, 52.97. So, if this city continues to shrink at this rate, it will shrink, um, it will have in population every 53 years or so. In a century, it will be about a fourth of its current population. So, doubling time and half-life lives. Any questions about that? Then once again, we probably have, we probably should do uh, exponential. I mean, we probably should do 
compound interest. Uh, maybe we'll do that Monday of next week. For now, just skip the compound interest question.